In Privacy Watch, critics say a controversial startup poses a new and profound threat to everyone's privacy. The facial recognition software attempts to match people's faces with billions of images scraped off social media websites and shares them with security agencies. CBS News correspondent Errol Barnett spoke to Clearview AI's co-founder and chief executive officer in his first network TV interview. And you're here with me now. So Errol, good morning. Um, tell me about what the CEO said. Well, Wonton Tat says he wants you and the general public to trust him. The 31-year-old says his company's facial recognition technology is only available to law enforcement right now, and it is to be used to identify potential criminals. But there are serious questions about whether this software is too invasive. Right now, we have you know billions and billions of images from millions of different websites all across the open internet. This is what Clearview AI's database would look like to law enforcement, says founder Wonton Tat, if, for example, they were searching for me. I mean, I've got to say, it's slightly unnerving seeing someone able to scroll through so many images of my face. But you have to remember that this is only used for investigations after the fact. This is not a 24-7 surveillance system. Tontat says his artificial intelligence program can identify someone from an image in seconds. It matches faces of unknown people to their online photos and the sites the images originally came from. The results, he says, are 99.6% accurate. Would you like to have a try? Sure. Let's see. When we That's tried out awesome. the company's phone app, even covering half my face, it still worked on the first try. There you but there go. we go. Tontat says Clearview has three billion images in its database sourced from millions of websites and social media platforms in a method known as scraping. Wired editor-in-chief Nick Thompson says facial recognition raises sobering moral and ethical questions. In order to build it, you have to scrape a lot of public information in ways that may be legal, but that certainly goes against the terms of service of companies like Facebook and Twitter. Secondly, this is really creepy. And the big companies who have the data already haven't wanted to do it. YouTube, Facebook, Venmo, and Twitter told CBS News scraping is against their policies. Last night, Google and YouTube sent Clearview a cease and desist letter, and this comes weeks after Twitter did the same, demanding Clearview stop scraping pictures from their platform and delete any data taken. Are you aiming to comply with Twitter? Our legal counsel has reached out to them and are handling it accordingly. But there is also a First Amendment right to public information. So the way we have built our system is to only take publicly available information and index it that way. And you believe you have a First Amendment right Completely. to access what's on yes. the platform? Clearview says more than 600 law enforcement agencies across the country use this software, but wouldn't say how many are free trial subscriptions. New Jersey Attorney General Gabir Graywall recently ordered state law enforcement agencies to temporarily stop using this technology until they learn more. What are your concerns with this technology? I'm not categorically opposed to facial recognition technology. I think used properly, uh, it can help us solve criminal cases uh, more quickly. It could help us apprehend child abusers, domestic terrorists. But what I am opposed to is the wide-scale collection of biometric information uh, and the use of it without proper safeguards by law enforcement. But Tontat argues Clearview AI is essentially a search engine for faces. Google can pull in information from all different websites. So if it's public, you know, and it's out there, and it can be inside Google's search engine, it can be inside ours as well. In a statement to CBS News, Google calls that comparison inaccurate, writing, quote, we give webmasters control over what information from their site is included in our search results, including the option to opt out entirely. And this platform is very powerful, but it relies on transparency mm -hmm. for people to trust and believe it. Yeah. And there just isn't much of that available right now. Well, that's why I'm here on TV explaining all these things, and that's why we meet with a lot of the people in government. Tontat tells CBS News the technology won't be made available to the general public as long as he's running Clearview. But Thompson says it may not be so simple. So Clearview says, you may be worried about our technology, but it's just used by police departments to catch terrorists and keep you safe. But if we know anything from the history of technology and the history of Silicon Valley, it's that the initial intended use 
is not the only use. And riffing off that last point, I'm sure a lot of people who are watching say this is disconcerting. So has there been any public response to this new software? Well, what's interesting is most people are concerned when they first hear about it, but that includes New Jersey's attorney general who we spoke with. Mm -hmm. He only found out that police departments in New Jersey were using this technology when the New York Times first exposed this company in January. He didn't even know. He didn't even know. And then that's why he's now ordered this moratorium on all the police departments to stop using it until they can put together a real code of conduct and safeguards in place so that people do feel safe and, and secure with this type of technology being used. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show how widespread this service potentially is being used. Clearview says it's more than 600 police departments, but they won't tell us whether those are free trials or whether these are actual subscriptions like some large cities are actually uh, paying for. And what is the fear if it reaches the general population and anyone's faces in this database? It's that it could be misused. And so for example, some people have wondered, well, what if I'm in the background of someone else's picture on social media exactly. that I don't know is posted? And that was my, my, my case, for example, is I saw images people had taken of their television or my fraternity at UCLA had put me in something I didn't know, and that came up. What if that is then, um, or, or some privacy advocates have said, well, what if you're at a protest or a demonstration and the police see that your face matches with you at these demonstrations, do you then become part of another database? And then what if it's available to the general public? What if you could snap a picture of someone's face and find their entire online existence? Have we now crossed this threshold into a world that many people didn't um, don't feel comfortable in, and, and that's really the, the issue this raises. So many questions about privacy, and of course this CEO is saying, well, there's a First Amendment right to public information, uh, but how can people better protect themselves from being a part of that public information? Well, one thing I asked uh, Wonton Tat about is, well, can you opt out of this? And he says he's developing a tool where you'll be able to potentially remove yourself, but how do we know if that's actually being done? He says that on Facebook, there's a special security tab. Mm. You can select to say, don't post my information publicly, but you and I both know there are plenty of older people who barely know how to use the platform security features And even younger as they people are. who don't know how to go to tab to tab to tab to try and remove Precisely. And the other question is, once all this information has been scraped, these billions of images and from millions of websites, do they store it and hang on to it, or do they really delete it as as Twitter and Facebook are demanding that they do? I think this could be this could end up in the courts. He says he has a First Amendment right to this. Um, meanwhile, I would check your online presence and your social media pictures. Errol Burnett, thank you so much. Good to chat with you.